Welcome to the shooting show. This week we're hunting the giant eland in Africa with Lano and Anka. Plus Wesley Stanton reviews the Armsan A612. It's our last day in Africa with Lano and Monopoulos safaris. Merkel's finest anchor has already taken three Plains game species, but it's now time for the big one, literally. Today we'll be hunting the giant antelope, the eland, the largest species the concession has to offer. This could be a memorable day, and we start things off with an unusual hunting method. We'll be going at it on horseback. This isn't just for sure, the horse's natural intelligence means they naturally avoid the worst terrain. And of course, they're a lot quieter than a vehicle, meaning we should be able to get close to more game. So you basically got three options, and, and one option is going by vehicle to locate your animal, but you, you only see approximately half of, of what there is to see. And the other option is by going by foot, which is, uh, I mean, you've seen the terrain, it's huge, you know, it's going to take you days to, 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 to locate the animals by walking. So um, one of the easiest options that we like to do is to go on horseback. It just makes it much more accessible. You get much closer to the animals on horseback. And uh, yeah, it's a good way of, of tracking them down. We trek high and low all morning, but the eland remain out of sight. The closest we get to action is when we spot a warthog in the low ground ahead, but it heads over the ridge and out of sight before Anchor can pull the trigger. Horseback hunting is an experience to remember, whether or not you get a shot at the end of it. With only half a day left on the safari, we want results, so we head back to base and regroup. By the time we're out again in the backy, the afternoon is already wearing on. It was midwinter in South Africa when this was filmed, and the light levels can drop very sharply in the evening. We need to be quick. But with another team out on horseback performing recon, we hope the odds are in our favour. Even with the whole team on the ground, it takes over an hour before we can stalk. The recon unit spots the eland herd and a copy, one kilometre from our position. And the big old bull we want to take is among them. All we have to do now is get there before they move on. We stalk as fast as we can, but we need to gain a lot of height to get level with the eland, and this is a tough task. But it seems we're in luck as we emerge from a section of dense bush and spot the herd ahead of us. There's a small valley between us and them, but as the crow flies, they're only 200 yards away. The shot is on. Wait, there's two in front of him now, eh? No, that's before you. Okay, there is moving out in front. Oh, they're totally in front, he's second now from the front. Whoa, 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 the second? Second, yes. Behind the bush. There's a pole between the front two. There he is, it is by the now, pole. Now he's coming out from the bush. Now I have him in the scope. Okay. I can shoot? You're ready, you can shoot. 
clearly hit, the bull runs on. Eland are massive creatures and can take some stopping. But the gecko round has done its job and the bull stops on top of the ridge. We pray it will drop in sight, but instead it appears to drop just over the side. With no eyes on the bull, this is going to make retrieval difficult in the fading light. There's another difficult height between us and the shot location, and it eats up the last minutes of workable light. And then we, yeah, we try to come um, to the animal, um, but it was the next problem. We have again, we have to go again down to the valley, over the stones, between the bushes and trees. But it was um, the last 10 minutes with light in this evening. In this evening, and so we say, okay, stop for the day. We look for the Island Bull tomorrow morning. I think so, yeah. That yeah, we can, we can have breakfast at six, and then when we're done, we come straight away. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, let's see what goes. We will pick it up anyway. I mean, uh, we have a good it, chance. It happens, sure. Mm -hmm. Why not? I mean... Day two, and we're out early, anxious to conclude the safari on a high. We've reviewed the video footage overnight, and the shot looked good, but we won't be able to relax until the bull is located. While the tracking team returns to the shot location to follow any blood sign, Lano and Anka try to stalk into the herd once more, just in case they'd got it wrong and the bull is among them. We catch up with them quickly as we spot a cow at the top of a nearby copy. The herd is just behind her, but it's out of sight over the top. If we don't get the stalk right, they could all disappear over the other side and we would lose our only chance to check the herd out. stalk goes by the book, but the bull, thankfully, isn't in the herd. Our camera team, unfortunately, has a plane to catch in the afternoon, so we have to leave empty-handed. And of course, as soon as we give up the stalk, the Eland herd decides to pass by our location less than 50 yards away. It's almost as if they know. Eland is big, I mean, that big bull that, that Anke had a shot at um, weighs up approximately to about a ton, you know, so uh, it's a lot of a lot of meat to take down and, and they can be tough, they can keep on going for miles so we still got guys on horseback and on foot looking for it so hopefully we we'll locate it very soon. It was an anxious flight back to the UK but as soon as we touched down we get the good news. The Elin Bull was located by the trackers. It had run on further than we thought but went down to a good shot from the helix. Anka can end her safari happy and we can't wait to be back with Lana and Monopolar Safaris in Africa. Lana thankfully saving the day there and now the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Plaza Sporting invited members of the shooting industry to EJ Churchill Shooting Ground for three major announcements last week. It revealed the new F3 Vantage over and under shotgun that features barrel and stock weight so users can adjust its balance. The company also introduced Team Blaza, which boasted a mixture of experienced and up-and-coming shooters and announced a joint venture with EJ Churchill. The school will now stock 40 Blaza shotguns of different models and sizes for clients to use while at the ground. For more information, check the next edition of Clay Shooting Magazine. MPs have been reminded that 75% of the world's heather moorland is found in Britain because of grouse moor management. This is what Basque is highlighting to Parliament as the end of the grouse season approaches on the 10th of December. Basque Chief Executive Richard Ali said grouse shooting delivers significant benefits to the economy, the environment and our tables. Grouse shooting is worth an estimated £100 million a year in England, Scotland and Wales. The ISSF Shotgun World Championships will take place in Russia in 2017. The Russian Shooting Union beat the Slovenian Shooting Union's bid to host the event by 204 votes to 75. It will take place at the Fox Lodge Shooting Range near Moscow, which is the main training centre for the Russian shooting team. Chief Executive of the Russian Shooting Union, Anna Leshkikova, said they had put a lot of passion into the project because they love shooting sports. ISSF shotgun events incorporate Olympic skeet, Olympic trap and double trap shooting. Project Trespass has released its first bulletin to communicate any updates on wildlife crime. Run by Glyn Evans of Basque and Cheshire Police Constable Tony Owens, the newsletter advises people on ways to best avoid poaching and rounds up recent events and relevant information for gamekeepers and others who want to avoid being the victim of wildlife crime. If you would like more information on Project Trespass, email glynn.evans at basque.org.uk. That was the Shooting Show News. Hi, I'm Wes Stanton, 
and on a very dull and uninspiring day at Edgehill Shooting Ground in Warwickshire, I'm shooting the very bright and inspiring Armsan A612 semi-automatic shotgun. Anybody who's familiar with semi-automatic oh. shotguns could be forgiven for thinking that this is a Winchester SX3 copy. It's not, they do look quite similar, but, but the gun is quite different. This is a gas-operated semi-auto, and this one is a three-shot. It's also available as a five-shot, so if you have a slot on your firearm certificate for a Section 1 shotgun and you want to go pigeon shooting, this could also be a choice. So the roots of the Armsan 612 do perhaps come from Winchester for its aesthetic. Um, part of the design of it, the, the tapered end cap, which is so attractive there, that can be traced way back to Giugiaro design when they came up with something similar for the Beretta Eureka. If you went back 10 years and looked at Turkish made guns, to find a semi-auto that actually worked properly uh, a decade ago was a bit of a rare find. Things have moved on, CNC machinery has got better, Turkey as a nation, and as far as guns are concerned, have invested more money and what is coming out nowadays is actually really quite good stuff. Start at the uh, butt, we have a ventilated recoil pad, so you could be forgiven for thinking that this is something to do with a trap gun, but increasingly this kind of device is found on more sporters. Moving up the stock towards the bolt, you've got quite a wide radius there, which um, means that the hand is actually in a fairly relaxed position. Some of the modern trap guns and the, the trap stocks nowadays hold the hand in almost like a cock position that puts quite a bit of stress on the wrist, but I quite like the way this has been designed. The, uh, the trigger guard, in common with many semi-autos, has an integral safety button on it. And then we move up to the very shiny bright red receiver. So in common with most semi-automatics, you load simply by dropping a cartridge, pointing the right way of course, into the chamber, pressing the button underneath, feeding a cartridge in like so. I've put one cartridge in the chamber and one in the magazine, it will take another one, but uh, for most clay shooting needs you only ever want to put in two. Um, to eject the cartridges, you simply pull out like that, the next one will come out and the bolt stays back, which is uh, a nice feature. Uh, the rib is quite a talking point on this gun. It's a medium height rib. It's uh, not as high as you might find on a Kriegoff or Parazzi, but I've yet to see a semi-auto that uh, exhibits anything like that. Uh, but it's clearly a clay rib. It's uh, quite wide. It's 9mm, so it's clearly intended for clay use as opposed to a, a more narrow game shooting rib. It has uh, two beads. It has a bright red foresight. No doubt in keeping with the bright red uh, receiver and uh, end cap. Um, and it also has a central sighting bead, which, I mean, I don't usually look at them when I'm shooting, but if you just want to check alignment, it can be quite handy. Now the 30 inch barrel on this gun is drilled from bar stock, which is actually the method employed by top end barrel manufacturers for producing their tubes. The um, boring of this is actually 18.4 mil, uh, which is slightly tighter than the nominal 0.729 if you look at it in Imperial. Um, but there does seem to be a trend amongst semi-auto manufacturers now to make the bore slightly tighter. Recently I reviewed the uh, Bonelli uh, Raffaello power bore which has a very similar internal barrel dimension. And we think manufacturers are starting to do that to make sure that the fibre wadded shells that are becoming more important to shoot at uh, sporting clay pigeon shoots uh, are going to perform well through their guns. Now in terms of its operation, this is very much a gas operated semi-automatic shotgun. If I take the forend off, you'll see how it works. Inside this uh, mounting, there are two small bleed ports that feed into this piston, which is rather dirty, that then drive that spring back to operate that bolt. So each time the gun is fired, the bolt is pushed back by the gases from the cartridge and thus cycling the mechanism. Oh. So we've just shot probably 50 shells through this this afternoon. You can see already the, there's deposit and residue 
on the outside of the cartridge magazine. So if you do use any kind of semi-auto that's gas operated, do take care to clean it thoroughly uh, every time you go shooting. Simply putting something through the barrel doesn't cut it. You have to keep these clean if you're going to keep them in uh, good working order. And right at the end of the barrel we have multi-choke. This comes as standard with a choice of three and a key to make removal of them pretty easy. Although uh, on this test gun we've used today uh, you can actually uh, remove them or put them back in by hand quite easily. So I've shot this gun this afternoon. What did I think of it? Actually it's pretty good. It's uh, reasonably weighty for a semi-auto. Um, I did notice because I was shooting gun down at Skeet that the rubber recoil pad did tend to snag. If I'm going to keep this gun I'd probably just trim off some of that uh, rubber at, at the end. Well, what I did notice about it, it was very low in recoil. You're going to expect that from a gas operated semi-auto. Um, but it pointed out the targets really well. I think that's something to do with a 30 inch barrel. Although it's a 30 inch barrel, like on many autos, it actually feels slightly longer and is particularly pointable. But uh, I shot around a skeet this afternoon, not particularly well, but that was something to do with me as opposed to the gun. I think if you were uh, looking for uh, a competition gun to shoot skeet with, sporting, it would be uh, just the job. It's very much a clay busting gun, although if you wanted to go pigeon shooting with it, it would serve that purpose just as well. I mean, maybe I'm getting old, but it just strikes me that the quality of guns that come out for the money nowadays from, from Turkey is absolutely phenomenal. I look at a gun like this and I'm thinking seven, eight hundred pounds. This new uh, will set you back £539 retail. That represents, I think, outstanding value for money. And it just goes to show, with the investment that manufacturers are making in CNC machines today, they're able to make good products, they're able to maintain their margins for growth and give shooters excellent value for money. I think if you're in the market for a, a semi-auto because you, uh, you suffer with uh, recoil fatigue, or uh, you just happen to like the aesthetic uh, of them, this one would make a pretty good choice. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.